indeed who might not know me. I'm Pastor Kenny Lee. It's my joy to be minister here in Marvel. Um, I want to apologize in advance for any um, quirky things you might see going on. We had an electrical outage here this morning. I actually thought we were going to be worshiping in the sanctuary today instead of, I'm sorry, in the fellowship hall instead of the sanctuary. So we're grateful that um, APNL came out and got things restored and we're able to be here in God's house in the place where we're most comfortable. If you're joining us online today, we're glad to be here to share this sacred time and space with you. We hope that you feel deeply connected to God in today's service. I want to invite you to enter into a spirit of prayer with me. Gracious God, it is by the power of your spirit that dwells in us that you have brought us to this place. Lord, you have brought us here in order that we might worship, that we might lift up and extol the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, that we might be in a relationship with the living God through the power of your Spirit. We ask today that the words that are spoken, the prayers that we pray, Lord, the songs that we sing will be, bring glory and honor to your name as we pray this all in the strong name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
invite you to join me in this morning's liturgy. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Glorious is your name in all the earth. We celebrate who you are and all that you have done for us. You hold our lives in your hands and catch us when we stumble. So we come together today, led by your Holy Spirit, to worship you, to sing your praise, to confess our mistakes, and receive your love and mercy made possible through the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be present among us as we worship you and open ourselves to your word. To you be all glory, now and forever. Amen. children to come forward for children's time. All, all one of them. <laughs> uh, before Miss Barbie gets started, I want to share a uh, thank you card from Methodist Family Health. Our dear friends at Marvel, thank you for your very generous gifts to our ministry here at Methodist Family Hill. What a joy this brings to know so many broken children and their families. With our gratitude, Michael Matt, thank you for your generosity. Today, in honor of the 4th of July, if you 
you are a veteran, we would like for you to stand up. Well, my goodness, we only have one witness here today. Can you go give that to Mr. Jimmy? If you are a spouse of a veteran, stand up. to recognize the families of our veterans and our soldiers because being a veteran or being a soldier doesn't just affect that person. It affects the whole family. So if you are wearing a necklace, I want you to stand up one more time. And I want to say thank you to all of you who have served or have are serving now or have been a spouse or a family member of someone who served.
gallons. Stephanie Powell, Friday she gets her passport. Ben Story, Kenneth Guest, Sue Lester, her surgery last week. Paisley Carroll, Mark Norman, Dale Rowan, Grace Henderson, Jerry Kelly, Doug and Melanie Moreland, Alan and Pam Wildschutz, Fern King Williams, Dale Webster, Chris Pollard and Raylan, Jerry from Bonnie and Curtis Petty, Scotty Schaffhauser, Pam Catlett, Bridget Hayes, Garrett Howard, Magnolia Adrian and Ryan Daltrey, Hugh and Gay Bonner, Alan Bach, Lori Donovan, Laurel Coker, Catlett and Sherry Lynn Kimmer, Helen Harper, Gail Gatlin, Joni Reed, Kathy Churchill, Linda Mochin, Darren Moss, Katie Jacks, Charles <coughs> Barbara Robinson, Rebecca Ferguson, Hewitt, Hewitt Perkins, Lisa Duvall, Becky Mott, David Treadway, Russell Lee, Mary Blush, Karen Reed, Paul Adler, Larry and Barbara Moeller, Reed Williams, Ian Miller, Miranda Rockham, Judy Bellamy, Debbie Gordon, Linda Reed, Dale Tyner, Matt Oxner, Joseph Rimley, Bonnie Goodwin, Carolyn and Mary Wilkinson, Agnes and Earl Whitson, Lee Scarborough, Winston Turner, Anita Porter, Jimmy Oliphant, Greg Brooks, Dan Walker, Danny Partlow, Hazel Story, Louis Acock, Brian and Charlotte Wayman, Glenn Hosey, Don Kimmer, Jim and Theta Bennett, Robert and Donna Bowery, Berkeley Leonard, Perry Davison, Chance Adams, Jim Gateway, David McKnight, Mary Hendricks McDowell, Charlene Henry, Bubba and Jamie Morris, Juanita Petty, Ned and Norma Young, Linda McDade and Alex Lee, Courtney Turner, who celebrated a birthday yesterday, <laughs> Lisa Fuller, B.J. Russell, Jared Fannin, Connie Powell, um, the family of Jerry Haley. Are there any other, her concerns? Shannon, mm -hmm. um, my niece Kaylee McDonald has been having trouble all of a sudden her lost vision in one of her eyes while playing softball, mm -hmm. but she still play ball. <laughs> and Dale Rowland got good reports. Bill Heidelberger is speaking in Rome. Bruce Hayes is assisting. <laughs> <laughs> Front doors of the church have been repaired. That's wonderful. And um, I checked in on Garrett Howard this morning and he said his first round of um, treatment didn't hurt him too bad. So we'll just keep him in our prayers. Fourth of July, everybody. <laughs> yeah, can I have another one? Beautiful, so we got Luke safely moved. Luke Schaffhauser was safely moved. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Every time I talk to people in Clarendon and Rowe, they ask me how Bruce is doing. <laughs> we wish we could see Bruce. It's a good thing <laughs> that he is going over there to the church that he used to go to so that people can see him. Yay! <laughs> Wait, everybody's glad that Bruce is in Rome. Now, now. Shannon, I ran into Mr. Winston in Walmart this week, and it made my day. He misses us, but he knows he's where God wants him, and he looks really good. Yeah. So, Winston looks really good, Charlotte said. I'm so glad. Winston Turner. I want to invite you to pray with me. 
Holy God, it is with great thanks and gratitude that we once again approach your throne of grace as your beloved children. Holy One, we acknowledge our need of you, Lord, our need of mercy and grace. And we thank you because that same mercy and grace is new to us morning after morning, that you continue to look at us as your beloved, that your will is directed toward the good of your children. And for that, we give you thanks, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this community of faith, for this facility, uh, which has been passed down to us from the saints of this church, Lord, as your Christian community has continued to grow and we have found ourselves in this place, Lord, we give you thanks that you have given us the ability, uh, the means and the desire to continue this church and this community. Lord, we pray today for those in our community who you have already chosen for us. May they come into these doors. May they feel your presence. And more than that, Lord, may they feel completely at home and welcomed by this, your gathered people. God, we pray for those in our community and on this substantial prayer list whose health is diminished. God, we ask that you would work on a better state of health through the power of your Holy Spirit and the ministries of the medical establishments in order that they might return to a better state of health and more freely and fully serve you. God, we ask today that you would be with those who have lost loved ones. God, that in their grief they might find your presence, Lord, that in their loss they might find that you are there with them through the power of your Holy Spirit and through the, the lives of those around them who reach out in compassion. Lord, we pray for those in our community who don't know Jesus. God, we, your children, the bearers of your Holy Spirit, the extension of your mission, give us boldness to share the good news of the gospel. Lord, teach us that our actions speak louder than words and that, that whatever doctrines and whatever scripture we know and, and, and seek to follow, God, that our lives need to line up with that. God, we pray that you would be with our military throughout the world, those people who serve selflessly, Lord, in order that we might continue to enjoy the freedoms of being a democracy, one nation under God. And yet, Lord, as we look around, it seems like there is so much, so many times, so many people who aren't under God, who have rejected the good news of the gospel, who have turned away from organized religion, Lord, they have no religion or they're done with it. Lord, the nuns and the duns. But God, you're not done with them. Teach us, God, to be people of hope. Let your light so shine through us that people can see Jesus. Let our visage diminish and let Jesus increase in all that we say and do. We offer this in the strong name of your Son, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. Our offerings continue to be received in a different way. Uh, we drop those checks and envelopes into the plate as we come in. We can also make donations online. If you're joining us virtually, I encourage you to consider placing a donation by going to our website, umcmarble.org pushing the donut button, and then completing that transaction with your credit or debit card. I also want to remind you that it, it's through your generosity that we support missionaries throughout the world, that we reach out to people who, whose lives have been devastated by fires and storms and natural disasters. We keep the lights on and paint the doors do all of the things that needs to be done in, in this facility by your continued generosity. And for that, I give you thanks. I invite you to stand as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above.
Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me 
rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Be to God. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the living out of this word that we share today. Luke gives us an unfolding story in his narrative, a time when John the Baptist preaches in the wilderness, telling those who gathered at the Jordan to be baptized in remission, in repentance, in remission of their sins, that the kingdom of God has come near. Jesus Christ comes on the scene, baptized by John, and he also has the same message, the kingdom of God is has come near. And throughout this first part of the narrative, we see Jesus exercising divine authority over the elements of nature, driving out demons, healing the sick, feeding the hungry with a sack lunch, teaching and preaching a new way of seeing and understanding God. And as Jesus, in Luke's narrative, turns his face toward Jerusalem, resolutely making the last journey that he will make to Jerusalem, he begins to travel through the area of Samaria. Now, no good Jew goes to Samaria like no good Jew goes to the land of the Gerasenes or the Decapolis. We heard that a couple of weeks ago. And so... Jesus and his entourage are going through Samaria, and he sends out the 12 apostles into the cities where they're planning on visiting. And he gives them a limited dispensation of the Holy Spirit and tells them to do the same things he's doing, to heal, to drive out demons, to preach and to teach, and to accept the hospitality that's offered. And now we see an even wider circle of disciples, and depending on whether you go with the number that Luke gives us, 72, or the one that Matthew gives us, which is 70, and there's, there's really an important, um, there's some important ideas, some important um, things that kind of revolve around that. Um, if you go back to Genesis 10, you'll see there's 70 nations that are listed in that genealogy of Noah and his son. If you go to the Greek, the Septuagint, it means the 70. It's the 70 elders of Israel who helped to translate Scripture from Hebrew and Aramaic to Greek. And, and Luke doesn't use this unintentionally because the 72, it, it really means all of humanity. That this mission, which was once centered in Israel about around one person, is now expanded to the 12 apostles and now even further into this group of people that he sends out into a place where no good Jew would go. Into a place that would potentially make them ceremonially unclean and in a place where they would be looked down upon uh, by their fellow Jews. Think about a place like a brothel or a bar. Or, or some place where disreputable people gather to, do, to, to converge and do illegal activities. The, the, the same sort of disparaging remarks that would be made around the character of a person who, who knowingly, frequently engaged in those kinds of things. That's the same kind of thing that these people are, are saying about this group of disciples. And so they're, they're doing this at, the, at really and sacrificing their own character. And so Jesus sends them out to do the work of the kingdom. First Jesus, then the twelve, now the seventy. And he gives these seventy people that same limited dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And tells them to do the same work that he's been doing. Heal the sick. Drive out demons. Preach the good news that the kingdom of God has come near. And teach people the scriptural basis for this understanding of this new way of following the God of Israel. And so they go out, and, and Jesus, he really sets a high bar. Did y'all hear that? 
No purse, no staff, no extra pair of shoes, no clean clothes, no money in your pocket, no food in your belt. Go out and preach the word. And you're going out into a place that's hostile to Jewish people. And so, and Jesus says, I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. I mean, he's, his metaphor is telling you these people are going to encounter hostility. That they're going to be rejected. But it's, it's really important for us to note that the same message that they preach to the people who accept them, the kingdom of God has come near, is the same one they preach to the places that reject them. The kingdom of God has come near. They don't curse those who reject them. They bless those who accept them, but they don't curse the ones that reject them. The gospel is still being preached. For 2,000 years, God has continued to call followers of Jesus Christ. And, and thankfully, in our own context, I don't know about you, but I have more than one pair of shoes. I don't bring them to church with me, but I can wear them to church if I need to. I have more than one suit. I have more than enough money to provide for my family's needs. I'm not rich by any means, but I have enough. And, and I try really hard not to be, you know, conspicuously consumptive. I, I don't feel like I need a new car every year. Although I thought about buying a new truck till prices went up so high and gas is so high, I can barely afford to drive the one I've got. But we're called, just like these disciples, to be dependent on God's provision for us. I mean, who else these, did these 70 people have to depend on except for God? Because if, if I go to a place and they accept my message and I stay for a couple of days and I preach and teach and I heal and I drive out the demons and, and, I'm, and I'm fed and I'm full... And now I go on my way and, and I walk all day to the next village and I get there and, and that group rejects me. That means I'm going hungry that night. And it means I'm going to sleep out, out in the, you know, out in the countryside. That I'm going to wake up with dew on me. That if it rains, I'm going to get wet. If the sun shines, I'm going to get hot. And I'm going to be tired and maybe even a little cranky because I haven't had anything to eat all day. But they didn't flinch. They just kept doing what Jesus told them to do. And as they went, they were amazed at this authority that had been, that had been conveyed to them by Jesus Christ. And, and, and they come back to Jesus and they said, Jesus, you won't believe this. Even the demons were subject to the authority that you gave us in your name. At the name of Jesus, these demons had to flee. At the name of Jesus, healing was accomplished. People who had diseases that couldn't be cured by the medical means of their day are restored to a whole person. Imagine having been, maybe being blind or deaf or having some besetting health condition. Maybe you have cancer and suddenly you're restored to full health. And they, and they survived at the places that rejected them and when they missed a meal, they still were okay. God still provided. God's still in the business of providing for God's people. Can I get an amen? amen. God is faithful. Amen. amen. Right now you're going, preacher, I wish you'd hurry up. We're about to have communion. And we've got to have a meeting afterwards. I get it. Jesus said to these disciples when they come back, and they're very excited about this mission. He's, he's glad that they listened. He's glad that they went out. And he knows that the mission of extending the gospel has gone out into the broader community of Samaria in a place where no good Jew would be. I was talking to Nana on Friday, and I went into uh, Double Quick about lunchtime, and I was starving on Friday at lunchtime. And the, they were getting flogged, and there was no chicken in the case, and I said, ah. I'm just going to go home and have a sandwich. So I go home and have a sandwich, and I come back and get a cold drink, and I sit down, and I did my sermon research and double quick, as I often do. And many of you have seen me in there. I mean, it's just, it kind of goes, I just don't know how you can do that in there. How can you concentrate? I'm like, well, you have to ignore um, curse words sometimes. And, <laughs> 
you, you have to, you know, you have to kind of tune out some of this side conversation that's going on between the workers and that kind of thing. But I'm going to tell you something. That's Samaria for me. That's a place where people know that I'm a preacher. And some of them actually filter what they say because they know I'm a preacher. And sometimes when I go in there and they're really getting hammered and I did this this week and I lose my reward for saying this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I went in there and all the tables were messy and those girls back behind the counter were just, I mean, they were tearing it up back there trying to cook, trying to clean, trying to take care of the customers that came in. There was a bucket of water and a rag sitting on top of one of the trash cans. I looked at that and I got up and I squeezed that rag out and I wiped every one of those tables. Nobody in there saw me except the girl behind the counter. She knows I'm a preacher. She knows that I'm in the community to serve everybody, not just the people here in the pews today. And I hope at some point, I hope that I can have a deep theological conversation with somebody in there or meet somebody's need or help that person have a deeper understanding of Jesus, maybe even come to Christ because I'm willing to go into Samaria and spread the good news. Where is your Samaria? Where are you challenged the deepest? Where, where is it so hard for you to be there and to, and, to, and to interact with those people that it takes everything you can muster just to do? Where is your Samaria? Because God called you to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, to take the good news of the gospel into that place, into the place where you work, into the places where you shop, into the places where you may find yourself from time to time that you wish you maybe didn't make that choice, but you're still there. And you can be a lot, and a lot is seen best in the darkness. And so the good news that I want to tell you all that Jesus said, and Jesus said, I've seen it all. I saw Satan coming down like a bolt of lightning from heaven. He said, and I've seen everything, and there are greater things than this, but I want to tell you the greatest thing that you have is that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus said all that other, it's, it's, we need to share the gospel. We need to know that it's sometimes dangerous. We need to know that sometimes we're called into dark places to talk to people that we're uncomfortable with. We need to know that sometimes our our way of life and the gospel will be rejected, but the message is the same. The kingdom of God has come near. When I go into Double Quick, the kingdom of God has come near. When I go to the food pantry, the kingdom of God has come near. When I go into Walmarts, the kingdom of God has come near. And my name is written in the book of life. That's the biggest, joyful, most thing that brings me the most peace and gratitude and I continue to offer the peace of Christ wherever I go and I pray that you do too in the name of God and Christ and the Holy Spirit Amen Samantha can you come help me enter into a spirit of prayer together. Gracious God, as we approach this holy moment, this sacrament, this time in which Jesus is very real to us, this time in which he is present in these earthly elements of, of bread and wine in some mysterious way that we cannot fully understand. What we do understand, Lord, is that we have broken your law. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not heard the cry of the needy. We have not loved our neighbor. And so, God, we approach your throne once again. And 
acknowledging our need, asking for your mercy and for your grace. Hear the prayers of our hearts, O oh God. Hear your, the voice of your people as we offer the prayer that Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gathered with his disciples, the night he, was, he gave himself up for us, he took a simple loaf of bread. He asked the Lord's blessing over it. Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe, who makes food come forth from the earth. He broke that bread, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he asked the Lord's blessing over it. Blessed are you, O God, King of the universe, who makes the fruit of the vine come forth from the earth. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We gather at this table to be reminded of the love of our Savior. I invite you to come to the table of the Lord. this moment, let's recommit ourselves to faithfully follow Jesus Christ, no matter where he leads us, knowing that he will provide everything that we need, that our names are written in the book of life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit.
grace. Jesus has called us, has empowered us, and now sends us out to do the work of God's kingdom. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, for each day that you have given us, this day that is a gift, we give you thanks. For this moment, this eternal mystery, which we have encountered you once again, may we rise in the strength of this sacrament, empowered by the gift of your Holy Spirit, to do the work of expanding the mission and sharing the good news of the gospel. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Hymn of Invitation is number 696. America the Beautiful. Let us stand together. <laughs>
May the God of peace go with you wherever he may send you. May he send you out rejoicing, bearing the news that he has sent. May he bring you back rejoicing at the works that you have seen and done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.